So here's what we're going to need before we start. I recommend you have two SDs. One is going to be a normal sized SD card. This is going to be the one to actually flash the firmware from here. And the second one is going to be a micro SD card. Uh, we can focus. This one is going to be used to upgrade your screen firmware. Um, so make sure you have one of each. If you don't, make sure at least yours is one of those that is... Um, one, of, one of these should work. One of these adapters should work just fine. But I recommend uh, 8 gigabytes on each one. Somehow it just works better for me. And we're going to go over which format you should have for these ones. Now, I have skipped several previous releases. Uh, for example, I was stuck on the 003. Then he came out with 007. 007 was huge. 007 allowed you to change your um, auto bit level probe probing size. Originally, if you had the first ones, um, the thing was that it would probe only like around the center and it would leave around this much space around the edges where it did not probe. The After the V007 released, he made it so you can actually um, move it up to 25, uh, which is the minimum distance, which only leaves you about this much of a gap. He, uh, uh, he might be working on to even make it even less than that, but um, I'm, I'm guessing it's that's the minimum because um, of what, what the original placement is for it. But if you have a, a mod that allows you to, I don't know, for example, this one that um, moves your probe a little bit more inside, or maybe you have a mod that moves a probe exactly on line with the, gan with the gantry, you might be able to probe you know, further back and more to the side. But in regards to this one, I'm very excited to be able to see what I'm actually printing on the screen. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we're, I'm going to follow the instructions with you. The uh, couple things that you will need to download are going to be the following. Um, again, you need to verify which... Um, which type of chip you have. You might have an F1 chip, which I think that's my case. I'll double check here in a second. Or you might have an F4 chip. The way you check which chip you have is by flipping your printer over and actually seeing what your chip ends in. And I'll leave a screenshot here on where it's located and how it looks like. this before on my v2 neo when i had it so this should be pretty familiar we're gonna add this to cura because i use cura you'll follow the steps if you're using something else now i'm gonna pause for you real quick okay so i have confirmed i have an f4 chip so i will use the firmware that ends in f4 now i do prefer the abl 555 probing um that's just what i prefer so i'm going to click that and it's going to download and let's grab the standard SD one now. And this one is where we're going to put the firmware in. Okay. So that the firmware is going to be almost as simple. It's going to vary here if you have, depending on what type of chip you have on your, um, uh, on your printer. In my case, it's an F4. So my process requires an extra step. But just like the other one, I'm going to format the SD card. And again, we're using the same allocation unit size and FAT32 as the file system. And again, it doesn't matter what you label it. Okay, so. All right, so we're back on the SD card now. So it's been fully formatted. I'm gonna open up my downloads folder again so I can go ahead and grab the firmware, which is gonna be this one right here. I'm gonna drag it down. But again, since I have a F4 chip, so there's an extra instruction you have to do, which is right over here. I have to create a folder that is called STM32F4 underscore update. Uh, so I'm going to create that folder, and we're going to name it, again, that right there. Okay, and then I have to copy and drag the, the file inside that folder. If you have an F1 chip, you can just drag the, file, the, the firmware without putting it in a folder, and you'll be fine, and that's how you update it with an F1 chip. The F4 requires 
the, the printer to read that you have this folder and then it'll update to the firmware. So at this point, that's really all you have to do. Let's go ahead and eject the SD card. Now, the way that you update the firmware will be the following. Okay, so, all right, so here's what we're gonna do first. Uh, just to verify with you real quick what firmware I'm currently on, hopefully you can see that. I'll uh, turn off this light here. So currently I'm running the version 007 by TT. This is the screen and firmware, the firmware, main firmware, and then the screen firmware, both are on 007. You need to update both to get the features that the firmware offers. So we're gonna do this. Um, we're gonna turn off the printer, okay? The SD card with the loaded firmware, we're gonna insert it to your SD slot, okay? And all we have to uh, all we have to do here is just turn the printer back on. Okay, it's gonna look like it kind of freezes a little bit. That's normal. It's gonna boot up. It takes like no more than thirty seconds for this part. The screen firmware takes a bit longer. So at this point, let's go ahead and verify once it boots will be able to verify the new versions already there. And as you can tell, I'm running uh, the firmware version ABL 5.5 version 008 by Thomas Tolka. Okay, so that's it. That's all you have to do for the main board uh, firmware. At this point, what we can do is turn off the printer again. Okay, I'm going to remove the SD card. All right, guys, so now that we have flashed the firmware on the printer, you, uh, depending on what screen you have, if you have a Dekai screen, you will have to follow the following steps. If you have a DeWin screen, you might not have to. But uh, in order to get the G-code previews uh, to be generated, we will need to update to Creality's uh, latest um, screen firmware release. I believe they're on version 28. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to um, require the micro SD card, okay? And we're going to load the Creality firmware, which you will get from the Creality official site. Okay, so the link will be in the description down below. We're going to look for the Ender 3 S1 Pro, which is right here. If you have an S Plus, you'll do the same thing. And we're going to download the... Um, version 28 release so it's 2.08.28 so this is the one we're going to use and um we're going to download that here so so here's what it's going to look like we're going to need three files from here which is going to be the duen set private and the firmware.zlib it's highly important that we have firmware.zlib on the micro SD card. So on the micro SD card, um, you will need to format it. And this is what we're gonna format it to. Okay, so that 32, 40, 96 bytes, and then the label, whatever you want. Um, mine's already been formatted and I've already copied the three files over, which are right there, do inset, private, and firmware.zlib. Um, which are these three right here, okay? After you've copied the three files over, we can go ahead and eject the micro SD card. And we're gonna install it into the screen. So to install it on your screen, we're gonna be using, a, again, a 2.5 millimeter Allen, Allen key. I'm going to put the lid back in just to secure everything in place. I'm not going to tighten these screws all the way. I just want them loose, uh, loosely tightened so they don't fall off. Since we're going to remove the screen anyways after this. And we're going to flash uh, Thomas's firmware after this. So, 
Okay, so remember at this point, we've already updated the firmware on the machine. We're just updating to the newest reality release firmware on the screen itself. Normally, it's going to be upside down. Okay, so now that it has finished loading, again, the screen just stays there. At this point, you're all set. You can just turn the printer off. Now, we're gonna unplug it again. And we will require uh, to, we're gonna require to remove the screws again. Okay, we're gonna remove the SD card. We're going to plug the screen back in. I'm going to turn it on just to validate the screen firmware is detected. Let me go to settings, about, and there it is, screen version 1.05. So we're fine. And I have already loaded the version 008 from Thomas. Okay, so at this point, we can go ahead and turn the printer back off again. We're going to unplug it. We're going to remove the screws again. Got the SD card. I'm going to go back to the computer. Okay, sorry guys. So the one you should be downloading, this is the screen firmware, is going to be this one right here. Okay, and uh, for, um, for Thomas's version, we don't have the ZLIP, it's just the win in private. That's all we need. So again, we're going to format the SD card just to be safe. Okay, so here's my SD card again. And we're only going to drag these two files in there. It takes a few seconds. Okay, and after we do that, we can just go ahead and eject the micro SD card. Okay, and going back to our screen, it's going to be the exact same process. We're just going to insert the SD card with the loaded firmware. Just like that. Put the cover back on, just to be safe. You can do this without the cover. You don't have to do this, but I like to do it because I am a... I'm very good at losing screws, so. And after you've done that, just plug it back in and turn the printer back on, and it's gonna start loading up the firmware once again. Okay, so it looks like it's just about to finish up here. Yep, update finished. It's gonna turn off. And it's going to kind of freeze at that point. At this point, you're all set. Just uh, turn off your printer. Disconnect your display. We're going to remove the screws again. Take out the SD card. Get the display. We're going to connect it back in. Okay. I'm going to put it in this little stand right there so you can see. Okay, so at this point, if you've done everything correctly, we should have everything loaded. About settings. And there we go, screen version 2.0 by um, Thomas. Let me just show you how to download the or properly set up the G-code preview. So we're going to click here. I'm going to open it up on another tab. And then we are going to go uh, here. So I'm going to be using Cura. So I'm going to be using um, uh, the Python script for it. 
we're going to go over to the three dots and we're going to download the file. Okay, I'm going to go over to my downloads folder. And this is the file we're going to get. Now, we will need to open up the scripts folder from Cura. To do that, you just go to Cura, you go over to your help, and you go to show configuration folder. Then from there, you go to scripts, and you open up the scripts folder. Now, from the file downloaded, you're just going to simply drag the file in the scripts folder from Cura. And that's all you have to do. After this, you just have to restart Cura. Okay, so now while, uh, after Cura is loaded, you can just drop an SDL file on there. Um, and in order to enable the thumbnails, we're going to go over to, um, to extensions, post-processing, and modify G-code. Um, we're going to add a script, and we're going to look for ES1 Pro 4 by TT thumbnail. 250 by 250 will be the default, which is works just fine. And then you'll know it's working, or you have the script loaded, because you're going to have a this uh, loaded up to your to next to your slice with the number one. You can verify by clicking there, and then I'll show you which script you have loaded, or by hovering over it, and I'll tell you which one. So from here, you can just slice the file. Okay, I'm going to plug in my SD card. And I'm going to go ahead and save it to removable drive and eject. So see how it looks like here. Okay, so I have it loaded up now. I'm going to hit print. Oh, wait, restart for some reason. So I'm going to hit print. And this is the file I loaded. Okay, so that works fine.